Hey, what is up, guys? We're back. This is the Leafs Convo Podcast presented by Oak Ridge Ford in London, Ontario, Canada. OakRidgeFord.com. Yes, it is Sunday, May 10th, 2020. I'm Norm James along with Mike uh, Jello. Long time no talk. We're still in the mix, folks, pushing 1 million total listeners in less than two years. Thank you very much for all of your support. And thank you, too, Mike, for getting up on this beautiful Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to your mom, Mr. A. How are you? Uh, I would be better if it wasn't 30 degrees Fahrenheit in Buffalo in on May the 10th. I'll pass it on to my mom for Happy Mother's Day. And, um, you know, still some news going on in Leafland as we move forward towards a possible June draft and games in July or August. I mean, everybody is anxious for things to move forward here in this limbo that we have because of COVID-19. But the, there still is news going on as well. Mm-hmm. There is news going on. And news right now is what's carrying the day for us. I'm waiting for the news that will get everybody really excited. The news of the resumption of the season that was put on hold because of COVID-19 or the end of it. Are there any rumblings, Mike? Is there any sense of you know when things may continue or either shut down and plan for a restart? The general consensus is that things are going to continue. It's just a question of when. Um, we've heard, I know Pierre Lebrun earlier in the week said, you know, the NHL still open to almost any option, 16 team playoff, 20 team playoff, 24 team playoff. I, I think it's leaning toward 24 simply because I don't think that they want to waste time playing meaningless regular season games when they've already determined a potential order for a June mm-hmm. draft. And it, uh, I, I heard Jeff Merrick talk about it on the, on the 31 Thoughts podcast that, you know, you have seven teams that aren't going to make the playoffs. Why bother playing games? It's just going to waste tests that they have to do on these players for meaningless games. So I think there's going to be a expanded playoff um, that, ex- you know, the expanded playoff will make up for some of the regular season games for the, you know, the rights holders like TSN, Sportsnet and NBCSN in the States. So that that will go forward like that. And then um, as for like how that will, you know, take place, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, there was talk of uh, like four host cities, um, six teams from each division in, in each city and the three through six in each division playing each other in a best of three series for the first round, which would have B- Toronto play Buffalo in the first round. Um, I think that's asinine. Mm-hmm. But that they may they may have to do that because and, and the, the most fascinating part of that setup was was the fact that they would have Boston mm-hmm. and Tampa Bay play a best of three series to determine who wins the division and for playoff seating. Just it's like okay, it. they were already either yeah. Why do that? Just you know, have a have a round to get down to sixteen and play and then play that. But I guess they they want these teams to play so they have some sort of content. But it's more going to be like Providence versus mm-hmm. Syracuse than Tampa versus Boston. Had the season not been disrupted, what May tenth, we'd be uh, into the second rounds now, Mike. Where would we be? Yeah, late second round. <laughs> uh, wow. I would think. Yeah, and and you know usually this is the time when the the Leafs have already cleaned out their lockers <laughs> and have been on while well on their way. So oh, but not this season. Nylander was on fire. He was going to carry the team easily. The Conn Smythe Trophy winner easily. That would have been nice. Mm. I would have supported that had we had the opportunity to have a full season and number eighty eight carrying the day. Who cares who carries it? Let's just have someone carry some sort of hockey um, between now and. I don't know, Mike. Everything is so fluid. We just don't know when things are going to start, when things are going to end, how that's going to impact seasons to come. Are, 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 we, are we going to be anointing a Stanley Cup champion, having um, Austin Matthews raise the cup over his head in August? Yeah, I mean, funny thing is, like, I mean, I, I said on, on one of our recent buzzcasts that, uh, you know, this would be the year the Leafs do win the cup and everybody would have the asterisk of, oh, that's not a real cup because they yeah, played best of cares? three we'll series, you know, who like, cares? right. But, uh, but uh, I mean, there has been some talk of even delaying the, the start of the playoffs till later. I mean, I know that the NHL and the PA have said that there's got to be a basically between 45 day and uh, 55 day break in between the end of one season and the beginning of the other. And from what the indications are, 
the next season is not going to start probably till December. So that means they could play playoff games. Wow. In September and That's October. Now, I think destroying I, everything. Yeah. I, I think that, I think that isn't going to happen simply because the rights holders, mm-hmm. like we mentioned, NBC and TSN and as the CBC Sportsnet, um, especially NBC, they have the Olympics canceled. So they have a gap in, I think, late July and early sure. August that they're begging to fill. And I think the NHL is probably going to be the, uh, the product that will fill mm. it. Interesting times ahead as to how this is all scheduled out. At some point, you're going to want to return to normalcy. We, we're not going to get, you know, we're not entering a new era where hockey starts in December and ends in the summer. Like, why not play if, if this season has to be pushed back? You know, you could essentially wrap it up in October, have a champion mm-hmm. um, crowned. You could have a few play-in games or a bit of a pre-tournament because you'll have a little extra time. Then take a couple months off and start in January, uh, an abbreviated season, end like you normally would, and then just pick it up for, I don't know, even know what the hell year we'd be into. But um, between now and getting back to normalcy, they can work things out. But the idea of starting a season potentially in December and having that run through the summer. Like I I know you want to recoup all the millions, uh, if not billions you've lost, but that should come in time. Let's get back to a normal schedule at some point, but fill the gap with hockey and with some sort of concrete conclusions to the season gone by and a setup for the season to come in the meantime. Yeah. Normalcy is going to be out the window. It's Mm -hmm. going to affect next season in terms of when we, when we start. But I, I I think, you know, the NHL definitely wants to have an 82 game schedule next year. Even if they start in December, that means eliminating the all-star game, probably eliminating the bye weeks. They've probably negotiated that already with the PA. And that may mean next season extends into June and you have the draft in July. But I think eventually they will get back to what schedule they normally have. But, but, but the thing is here, is September, and this is why I think September and October is not going to fly. Everything has been moved, like the Daytona 500, the Masters, the Kentucky Derby. Oh, your favorite sport. Everything events. has been. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. But everything has been moved to September. And it's like, okay, there's enough product there. If, if everything, you know, everything is cleared in terms of the spread of the, uh, the virus, that the NHL will be lost in, in sort of the background. July or August, they'll be they'll probably have the stage completely to themselves, mm. and I think that's important for them because that's the only reason they're having wanting to have the draft in June. This is the Leafs Convo podcast presented by Oak Ridge Ford in London, Ontario. OakRidgeFord.com. We are open by appointment only. You can get at me on my Facebook page at Norm at Oak Ridge Ford. Very simple. There's lots of buzz right now. You'd be surprised how many people are looking for vehicles and who are coming to Oak Ridge Ford, me specifically. And of course, I represent Mike Augello. Um, There's a lot going on right now on Facebook, Instagram. And of course, you can reach out to me in community at the Leafs Combo YouTube page or channel. Uh, Mike, got to go soon. We've got to go line up for donuts. Um, But uh, Miko Lettinen, if that's not the most mm-hmm. finished name of all time, I don't know what is. Yeah, in, an intriguing uh, signing by the Leafs. Um, obviously, not really much on the radar until last year. Now, he played for Finland in the World Juniors in 2014. Um, he uh, won a world championship with Finland. He was on the Olympic team in 2018. He's been you know, basically going back and forth between SM Liga in Finland and the SHL over the last couple of years until last mm-hmm. year when he played in the KHL with Jokerit. And he led the KHL in defensive scoring with 49 points. Very mobile, mm-hmm. you know, uh, considers himself a two-way defenseman. He's a left-handed shot, which doesn't really help the Leafs in terms of their right-handed issues, but he's played the right side internationally before, so that might be an, an option. But it really improves the depth of the organization. And I joked in a tweet last week, says, well, one more player that prevents Martin Marinson from making the 23-man roster, it's a win-win situation. But I think you know he's 26 years old, so this is not like a developmental project where he goes to the Marlies. This is a guy who, if he doesn't make yeah. the top five, doesn't make a four, five, six spot on the roster, he's probably going back to the KHL on a European assignment clause if he has that in his contract. But I think 
they believe that he can play in the NHL. So that's the reason they signed him to a one-year deal. I like it. Management getting creative. Anything that helps solidify what's going on back there. There are elements. The pieces are there. It's about, you know, supporting those pieces with um, the right personnel. And, hey, uh, Leafs management has nothing but time on its hands. So keep working it, boys. Paul McFarlane heading back to the bright lights of Kingston, Ontario. Yeah, this caught a few people by surprise. But if you think about it after the fact, it makes a little bit of sense in the sense that Sheldon Keith inherited Mike Babcock's coaching staff. Um, it sounds like McFarlane, you know, McFarlane made it clear in his uh, conference call after the announcement that his goal is to be an NHL coach. Uh, he's, he had success uh, with Florida uh, under Bob Bugner. He had success in terms of the po- developing the power play after a slow start with the Leafs. Um, now I think he sees that, you know, if he gets more head coaching experience in the, in the OHL uh, with Kingston, with uh, Shane Wright, who is a young player with exceptional uh, status, um, you know, that it probably will improve his resume to get an NHL head coaching job. I think he's proved himself at the AHL, at the uh, NHL level as an assistant. You know, maybe coaching in the AHL would help him as well. But he's 34 years old. I, I think that's basically it. I don't, I don't sense any kind of animosity here or anything like that. It's just an opportunity for him to, to up, to upgrade his resume in terms of being a head coach. And it's a loss because I think you know he did wonders with the Leafs power mm-hmm. play. They were sec- they were second in the league after Babcock was fired, and they put Tyson Berry on the point. So, um, you know, he will stay with the Leafs until the end of the, uh, the season, whenever that is, and then join Kingston after that. Mike, any last things you want to throw into the mix before we venture off into this Mother's Day 2020? Yeah, I just I'll just mention quickly. Uh, I've been writing a couple articles. Like last week was the 53rd anniversary of the Leafs last winning the Stanley Cup, and I I wrote about you know the, the the three teams, you know, 78, um, the 93, 94 Leafs, and the, the today I'm going to write about the 99 and 2002 Leafs that made the, all made the conference finals but couldn't get to that next step of either making the finals or winning the cup. And I, in looking at those three teams and talking with some Leaf historians, they all had the same issue, and that was defensive depth. I mean, you, you look at 78, and it was Salming and Turnbull. You look at 93, 94 – um, they had Dave Ellett and they only had five they, on half for four, seven of the 21 games they played against the Wings, Kings and Blues. They only played five defensemen, which is unheard of. Mm-hmm. And then the most recent team, the 99 and 02 Leafs, you know, they had Caberle and McCabe. But really the depth on that team defensively was not was not good enough. And I think that sends a message or should send a message to the to the current Leaf management that, yeah, you have. You know, you have Riley, you have Muzzin. You need to probably at least be three deep and really quality defensemen to be able to, you know, uh, have a chance at winning a Stanley Cup. And, yeah. of course, in my mind, that means going after an Alex Pietrangelo yeah. if you can go after him in free agency. Callie Johansson, bring him in. Yurke Lume, bring him in. Bring them all in, Mike. Let's get it done. Look, if you haven't changed after this period of isolation – and desolation and depression and reflection, then you're not a human being. Most people, hopefully, will have changed for the better, not just in their lives, but professionally, too. And that goes for Kyle Dubas and the Maple Leafs and Sheldon Keefe and everybody associated with the organization. A lot of reflection, but uh, a lot of hope for the days, weeks, and months ahead. OG's Converse, I have to thank you so much. Even in these difficult times for podcasts, and sports, uh, we've eclipsed 1 million listeners on all platforms. And that's in two years. Mike and I resuscitated the Leafs combo in April of 2018. Two years later, 1 plus million listens on all platforms. Funky little podcast doing its thing. You guys keeping us going. Thank you so much.